Welcome to Girls With Swords. I am so, so excited about this message. I'm thrilled to be able to share the why behind it. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story so you know why we want to have Girls With Swords. I had just finished writing Lioness Arising and I was driving in my car. And um, to be honest with you, my life is kind of a blur. And so I kind of did an after the fact prayer confirmation. I said, now God, I know I was supposed to preach that message. Was it okay that I wrote it as a book? I would love a confirmation from you on that front. It was already in five languages, but you know, I know that God knows me and he knows how to work with my randomness. And so that night I was home with my boys. I was in the throes of a school project. My son Arden at about eight o'clock at night had said, mom, I just remembered I have a school project due. And so I had said, okay, I'll tear apart the other children's school projects. I brought up the poster board. He was like, not the right poster board. So I braved a blizzard to get the right poster board, paid the other children money to cut out pictures. I come home, it's all spread across the table when my husband calls me. Now, let me tell you something about my husband. We've been married for more than 30 years. And if your husband has an annoying habit that he's been doing for 30 years, you might as well just call it cute. So my husband has this cute, rather annoying habit of calling me and putting me on the phone with complete strangers. He's like, hey honey, you wanna to talk to these people? I'm like, actually I don't, John. I'm in the middle of a school project. He's like, no, 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 you're gonna to wanna to talk to this guy. I gave him your number, get ready, he's going to call you. I'm like, exasperated. The phone rings just about five minutes later. I pick up, I'm like, hello. I tried to sound really exhausted, really wounded. Like, please don't, please don't trouble me. And he was like, is this Lisa Bevere? And I'm like, yes. And he said, your husband held up your book tonight, Lioness Arising. And he said that the lions are the best killers, but the lionesses are better hunters. And I said, well, of course he would say that. That's actually all he knows because he hasn't read the book. And he said, well, I am calling you to tell you why your book is important. Now all of a sudden he had my full attention. He said, let me tell you what I do here at Fort Bragg. He said, I am in charge of special ops. And he said, I need to tell you something. Do you know we are not winning the war in Afghanistan? And I was like, yes, I, I actually do. He said, do you wanna know why we're not winning the war? I said. Sure, in the middle of my son's school project, I want to know why the U.S. military is not winning this war. He said, well, one of the key reasons is our men cannot speak to their women. He said the culture forbids it. And he said, so what we have decided to do is create a team of women who will go in and tell the Afghan women they have voice and value. Tell them why democracy will serve their sons and daughters well. Take care of their minor medical needs and deliver their babies. And he said, I need to tell you the name of this group. It's called Team Lioness, and they're about ready to be deployed. May I have a copy of your book for all of them? I remember in that moment, I almost fainted. I was like, absolutely. And I, I got to outfit all of the Fort Bragg special ops women before they went over there. But I tell you this story for a reason. If the US military understands that without the involvement of women, we can fight, but we will never win. It is time that the Church of Jesus Christ remember that if it's going to win, it needs its women. And we don't need women who are just nice, sweet women at home. We need women who will fight alongside the men, not fight with the men, fight alongside of the men. Because God created it that man and woman together made everything better. God called it excellent in every way. I believe that the church is waiting for the women, waiting for the women to rise up and not just rise up and be like, okay, let us preach in the pulpits now, but actually begin to lay hold of the sword of the word of God. We need our women, not just involved, we need them armed, we need them trained, we need them prepared, and we need them celebrated. They need to know that we want them involved. And so to that end, this is the reason for this study. I really believed as I was praying that there were so many young girls that know derivatives of the words. They know catchphrases, they know, oh yeah, you know, this or that, but they don't know the richness of the word. They don't know the depth of the word, 
And the thing about catchphrases is, yeah, they're catchy, but they will not catch you in the time of trouble. We need people that actually declare the word. We need people that stop dumbing it down or interpreting it. We need to be entrusted with the word of God, which is the language of heaven. And if we will speak the language of heaven, earth will recognize the voice of its creator and it will respond. And so Girls With Swords is about girls empowered with the word. I really believe that you are watching this because you are one of them. And there is a sword that God wants you to wield. It has everything to do with what he has done in your life and what he will do through your life. You are called to this time. You are a daughter of destiny. You are a daughter that is going to have to choose, though, whether she wants to be a warrior or a prisoner of war. There really isn't any middle ground. Now, having said all this, I think you need to be excited. I think you need to be excited that you are a daughter with purpose and that you need to live intentionally, which means you need to let the Word of God begin to map out this journey. So we did a curriculum because we believe it's not enough just to hear something or see it, but you have to make it your own. And if you are watching this intro as part of the curriculum introduction, you have a book and you have a workbook. And you need to go through those because we want you to make it your own. Something happens when you read and then you write. It becomes your word. It becomes your gospel. It becomes flesh in your life. It begins to interact with your world and with your life. So you need to do the workbook and the book as you watch the videos. And what we'll do is this is the setup for lesson one. I also want you to take this session to say, what am I expecting? What is my hope? Am I just going to study the word to know more? Or am I actually going to study the word because it's time that I do more? Am I going to study the word because I'm tired of myself and I want to be transformed? I also want you to get related to the other women because you know what? You're doing this together and iron sharpens iron. And so you are going to maybe rub against each other a little bit, but you're going to do this in relationship with other people. If you're saying, I'm going to do it alone because I don't get along with people, you need to find somebody and you need to do this with them. Because I think I'm amazing when I'm alone, but I find out I am a little bit testy when I'm in the company of other people. So you need to get with other people so that your sword can be sharpened. You need to have a realistic expectation that you can do something and God will answer. The word of God, he promises that he's going to actually watch over it. To perform it. So if you are faithful to write down the word and then I'm going to have you do something, you need to start speaking it. It's not enough to read it. It says that we recite our verses for the king. He says that the word that goes forth, he watches over that and it doesn't return to him void. It returns when we speak it. So you need to get in a habit of praying and speaking the word of God. I'm so excited. I believe the Word of God will transform your life. I know this study is something God has entrusted to me, and I know that you'll get as much out of it as you choose to put into it. So let's go for it. Let's be girls with swords. Let's begin to raise that sword up high and watch what God will do in and through our lives. God bless you.